what is the relationship between advertisement and what sales what is the relationship since you are all in business school or you are doing bsc admin i'm sure you've done basic accounting okay what is the relationship between working capital and profitability so by looking at estimating relationships or causal effect between variables this time around we are using variables so working capital can be a variable profitability can also be a variable what is the causal relationship then we say that we are using what we call correlation and regression analysis that is our last discussion correlation and regression analysis if i want to find out what is the extent of relationship between you and your siblings or between you and your uh, should i say your wife your husband or your your pilolo in this case is it now you have a weak relationship or a strong relationship okay then again if i ask you that to what extent will the activities of party a affect party b now i'm looking at if party a is going up does it affect party b does party b also go up or party b goes down so correlation establishes the relationship whether positive or strong weak or strong or otherwise then regression is looking at what happens to when one person is moving up or going down what is the effect on the other so correlation and regression is just to say that we need to understand linear relationship between two variables usually we use what we call the scatter plot okay scatter plot in this sense also gives us the level of relationship between two variables i'll explain or show you an example of a scatter plot but correlation analysis is used to measure strength as i said strength of association and here the strength is either positive or negative okay positive or negative strength or we'll say that it is fairly strong or fairly weak hmm. so listening to say that we are saying that correlation only measures strength of the relationship it doesn't teach us the causal effect causal effect here means that we are looking at increasing or what decreasing okay then we use the regression so this is an example of a scatter plot if you plot x and y which you have y and x x and y variables okay we are looking for linear relationship when you look at here if i draw a straight line between this you see that at least there are some relationship which you can say they are positive this one can mean negative then you can have a kerflinia relationship when you are using the scatter plot that's one way of estimating relationship between two variables is it that strong or weak <clears throat> as i indicated or there will be no relationship at all okay there is nothing happening just like a guy keeps chasing a certain young lady at the end of the she's be he's begging but the lady tells him no relationship it's just some mutual whatever okay so there could be a relationship or there could be no relationship just to use that as an example by way of doing that we need to find or compute what we call the correlation coefficient which is defined as r you don't worry about the population correlation coefficient we'll be looking at the sample correlation coefficient all this while we'll be using sampling because it's difficult to get the exact population so you use a some a representation of the population that's sample so r is called the sample correlation coefficient we'll be looking at it okay then we are saying that the relationship actually is between minus one and one that is to say that is from zero to 100 
okay, or minus one and one, or zero, closer to zero, or closer to one. If it is the relationship is closer to one, we are saying that it's about 90%. It's a strong relationship. 80% strong or 85, 70. If it is also closer to zero, the relationship, although it's linear, it is a weaker word relationship, like 5%, or let's say 22%. It's a weak word. And this example, just to show the R. So when we compute the R, it gives us fairly between X and Y, the strength of association. That is what that will give us. And by that, I always say that don't bother about when you see formula, some of you, when you, the more formula you see, you become confused. But that's not an issue. I will always explain the formula to you. So R is computed as this, okay? Given that this is a sample, we are looking at X and Y, X and Y. So X and Y here, S times Y is just telling you the covariance between X and Y. What is the covariance between what X and Y? So we need to first of all find S and find Y, X and Y. Okay, so S, Y is giving us this. Since we're saying the difference, watch here. I hope you still remember X, I and X bar. So you have values for X and values for Y. So we find a mean for Y and mean for X. Then we are going to subtract for each of the sample. We find the difference between X and difference between Y divided by sample size minus one. Then the denominator, this guys here, S, the X and the Y here, we are looking at the standard deviation. And by now we all know how to compute standard deviation. So this is standard deviation for X, this is standard deviation for Y. When you find everything together, that gives you what they are. In simple term, this is the expansion of what the formula you have here, which is, not different from this. So let me give you this table, okay? So you have weekly commercials and sales volume, okay? Like I said, advertisement and sales or profit. We want to find out the association between the number of commercials we do with regards to the sales that comes into the business. And we are looking for R. This is week one to week 10. X represent the number of commercials we've done. When we did two commercials, our sales volume was 50,000. When we did five commercials, our sales volume was 57,000. 57, one commercial, sales volume 41,000. Three commercial, 54. Respectively to week 10, when we did two commercials, our sales volume was what, 46,000. And we are saying that R is equal to what? X, Y divided by X, the covariance, and this guy here. Okay, as we have here. So, and we've defined X. We define X, Y, sorry, X, Y as the... <clears throat> A minute. A minute. <coughs> Sorry, guys. So we define X, Y. What is the thing? Yeah, S, Y. As first of all, we need to know the sample mean for X and sample mean for Y, okay? So when you see this table, I've extended the table. This is an extension, okay? So for instance, I'll give you this table and ask you quickly to complete these two or three columns. So X minus X bar, how do we find X bar? 
x bar is what the sum of all the values under x divided by the number of samples which is what summation this is 30 then we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so 30 divided by 10 will give you what 3 so when i say x minus x bar then i'll pick the first x value that's why we said that this is xi minus x bar then we are also saying that yi minus y bar that should give you the covariance up here good so three minus sorry two minus three will give you minus one five minus three will give you we are still we are under x let me write here x so then 1 minus 3 will give you minus 2. 3 minus 3 will give you 0. 4 minus 3, that's 1. Respectively, you do all of them to give you x minus x bar. Then for y minus y bar, we need to find y bar. Y bar again here, the addition of all of these guys here, 510 divided by the number of sample size, which is also 10. So this will be 51. So Yes, I think so. They should give you 51. So 50, this is 50 minus 51. This will give you 57 minus 56, 51. That is 6. 41 minus 51 should give you minus 10. So all of this gives you the value that we are looking for. Okay, then by way of summation, remember we are saying that the covariance between x and y, this guy here is giving us summation i n goes to i goes to one or into bracket x i minus x bar <clears throat> times y i minus y bar. Okay, so one minus one times minus one will give you one. Two times this will give you twelve. This, I hope you know, negative time, negative is positive. This will give you 20. This will give you zero. This time, this is three. This time, this is 26. This time, this is 24. Then, this will also give you zero. This will give you eight. This will give you that. So, the sum of all that, that is what this guy is saying. The numerator. The denominator is n minus one. So, 99, as we have here, is 10 this is 10 minus 1 give you so our covariance between x and y is 11. we've estimated that everything for the numerator here now we need a denominator we are looking for the standard deviation of for x and standard deviation for y we can extend the table okay to find that but if you look at this critically all you are saying is that is this guy here it's also giving us summation why is that uh what can i write this so s this guy is what saying you are looking at the square root of summation i goes to one also all the way to to say that x i minus x bar square divided by n minus one so it's technically saying that whatever I have here, I can find the square of minus one, square of this, square of that, square of this, square of that, square of this, to give me the standard deviation for x. So we can extend the table. This is what we have here. So please note that we are saying that this guy here, one square, minus one square is what? One. Two square is what? Four. Minus two will give you four. This will give you zero. This will give you zero. This will give you four. This will give you four. Square of zero is what? Zero. One square is one. Minus one square is also one. So that gives me that value. The standard deviation for, let me put here, standard deviation for x. Then I need standard deviation for y. Also says that you've already done y minus y bar, which is this. So this square is this to give you 36 109 169 
Oh, this is also the sum. We are adding them. Remember, it says summation. Then it says that 20 minus N1, which is this. So you are looking at 20 divided by 9, that's 1.4. Then 2566 six, also divided by the denominator 10 and 10 minus 1 will give you this. So my standard deviation for x and y respectively when I multiply them divided by the 